This is One on One. We welcome uh, Daryl Roth here to the studio. She's a theater producer. She has won six Tony Awards and produced seven Pulitzer Prize winning plays. And currently she is uh, connected to a wonderful play called Kinky Boots on Broadway, playing at the? Al Hirschfeld Theater. Tell everyone what Kinky Boots is all about, because it's a fascinating premise. It's a wonderful story. It's a great musical. Uh, the excitement about this, for me, is that it's a true story. And I saw the film Kinky Boots at Sundance six years ago when I first got so excited about the story that it was telling and thought as I was watching the movie, what a fabulous musical this would make. Mm. So I came home from that experience and went about getting the rights and then thought about the people that would be ideal to really create this piece for stage. The premise is? Uh, the premise is it's a shoe factory in the north of London where well-made, well-crafted shoes are not exactly what people want anymore. And so the factory is failing. On top of that, it's a generation of a family, the Price family generations. For, it's been in their family for years. And the young son, Charlie, right. um, played by the amazing Stark Sands, comes home Stark after Sands his father Stark Sands, who we also have coming into the studio. Stark, who you right. have coming into the studio, right. is Charlie Price, the son of... His father passes away suddenly, and he's called up to the factory to try to run it and save it. And he didn't want to always do that. He didn't want to do it at all. Right. It was not his passion. He gets home and realizes the factory's in trouble, and he's going to have to figure out a way. And with the help of the factory workers and a good young friend, Lauren, who works there, they come up with this idea to find a niche market. Jump to Charlie <laughs> being in London one night and breaking up a brawl where he thinks a woman is being beaten up, he goes to her rescue. She, because she can care for herself, swings her boot around and accidentally clunks Charlie in the head. He falls down, wakes up in her dressing room, where we meet the amazing Lola. 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 A beautiful woman. A beautiful drag queen. What? Played by Billy Porter. <laughs> in the most amazing performance that I think Broadway's seen in a long time, he was meant to play Lola. Lola is a drag queen. Uh-huh. And Go her ahead. angels in the club. And when he is hit in the head with Lola's boot, the heel breaks. Thus the little seed is planted that perhaps if they can make, if Price and Son can make strong boots for women who are men, right. they might have that niche market they're looking for. And the community responds immediately and says, great idea? Charlie and Lola say, let's give it a try. The factory workers are a little slow to come around, but sure. when they do, it's the most wonderful story of acceptance, learning about people that <clears throat> you would never meet necessarily, learning to accept each other for who you are. It's the story about finding your passion in life. It's the story about being true to who you are. It's the story about growing up and finding your way. Both of the young men, Lola, mm or Simon, as his name is, and Stark, Charlie, have always tried to live up to their father's ideals. There's a beautiful song called I'm Not My Father's Son, which I think most people will relate to. And it talks about trying to please your father, trying to grow up to be who they want you to be, and realizing that you can only be true to yourself. Um, what I want to tell you that is the most exciting is that Jerry Mitchell is our director choreographer. Tell everyone who Jerry Mitchell is and why that's significant. Uh, Jerry is just wonderful with this kind of staging and storytelling. Harvey Firestein wrote the adaptation of the film for stage. And the big excitement and the thrill that I think people will recognize. the music? Cindy Lauper. Wow. This is her first musical. And there's Harvey Firestein in the middle. Yeah, that's our dream team. Wow. And they have created something that I just couldn't have even imagined. It's exactly what I wanted to happen. You know, take a beautiful story with an important message about how to be kind to one another, how to accept one another, how to live your life truly. Mm. You know, those are themes that I'm yeah. always interested in. It's interesting you talk about themes you're interested in. We should set the context. Um, we'll talk about some of the other work you've done, but you mm. also have a space in lower Manhattan where there's a lot of wonderful work going on, not on Broadway, but Definitely connected, off to the, Broadway. connected to uh, theater and the arts. Mm -hmm. Describe that space, what goes on and why it's so special. Fifteen years ago, you were telling me before mm -hmm. you get on the air, it started. Talk about it. Well, it's a beautiful old building. It's a landmark bank on Union Square East and 15th Street. And it's just very uh, architecturally stunning. 
It was for sale some years ago, and I was doing a lot of producing off-Broadway at that time, and there were not enough theaters for commercial off-Broadway productions. And this building became available, and we were able to purchase it. Who's the we? We? Um, my husband and I were able to purchase it, let me say. It was a magnificent uh, You're a team. gift of understanding. He's been my best supporter. He's been my best supporter. And I have a son in the business who is doing amazing things. And I have a wonderful daughter who is a social worker doing amazing things in her world. Right. But my husband, Stephen, recognized uh, the value of this building, and we bought it. Originally, I expected to make it into a 299 seat off Broadway theater, which is what we were needing in the off Broadway community. And I got a call from a young producer who said, I'd like to show you a video of this amazing performance art piece that's coming from Argentina, and it needs a space much like your bank without any seats. We have high ceilings, we have 50 foot ceilings, no obstructions. It's a magnificent footprint. I said, Of course, let me see. And the video arrived, and I sat down. I remember this to the minute with my son, Jordan. And we watched this amazing performance piece. There are people swinging around on bungee cords, and they're bouncing off the wall. And there is this amazing music going on. I mean, it's a very visceral, emotional, exciting evening. Right. It was something called De La Guarda. And it was amazing. I looked at my son, and I said, either I'm crazy, or this is amazing. Let's give it a try. So instead of moving forward and outfitting this building as a theater, we took in De La Guarda and we, we actually co-produced it. And it lasted for seven years. And, and now its cousin, Ferza Bruta, which is another version of this kind of performance piece, is in there and um, doing well. So you, in this space, we have two different Yes, that's in the big space. Right. And, and all this goes on. And, and your life is very full and, and you're in gainfully employing a lot of people and putting on um, mm -hmm. wonderful performances that are um, just providing wonderful um, Hopefully. and enriching experiences for folks. You are a Jersey girl. I am. You said you were from born Wayne, and bred. Mm -hmm. Wayne, New Jersey. Yeah. You know, for those of us who are born and raised in New Jersey, particularly in northern New Jersey, I'm only one town over from you mm -hmm. in Montclair. I see the Broadway sign uh, behind you and, and over-the-shoulder shot. And it, it always strikes me, I've said this before, being in this Lincoln Center studio that uh, uh, you know, we're in because of our partnership with WNET. Right. I've often said that when you live in northern New Jersey, and I, I don't think I'm making too much of this, and you can react to it whenever, however you choose to, that working in New York, being gainfully employed in New York, mm -hmm. doing meaningful work in New York, particularly in connection with the arts, theater, media, whatever it is, is one of the most uh, challenging uh, journeys one can make from New Jersey to New York. Well, do you mean challenging in the actual physical? Nope. Well, well yeah, getting, <laughs> getting because that put it this is way, for sure. getting here today and having to go not through the Lincoln Tunnel, but going around to the around. George Washington Bridge and coming mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. the West Side Highway. Yeah, that's another story. But that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what you mean. Philosophically. Philosophically and practically. Yeah. And actually, getting it through, doing what it takes, being rejected, coming back again and again and again. Sometimes I think coming from Kansas is easier. I don't know. I'm not from Kansas. What do you think? I would respond this way. I think the joy of growing up in New Jersey, and I raised my children in New Jersey too. We do live in New York now, but during those earlier years, I think we had the best of both worlds because we were able to live a relatively normal suburban life, which suited our family, right. not for everyone. And yet, we were able to come to New York. I, as a child, came to New York every Saturday to see a show. So you did? I did. We really took advantage. New York was part of your world? Yes. Okay. It was across the river, Got it. but it was, it was the dream across the river. Got it. For some of us, it was you a million know. miles away, but go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I know. I had but, neighbors right. in New Jersey who, I mean, coming to a Broadway show, you would think yep. they were going to another country. And they didn't know how to even get there, but that's another story. But go ahead. And that's something You else. had this whole experience. But experience yeah. that, how much did that help you, not only just have the passion, mm -hmm. but have the confidence that you could pull off what you've been able to pull off. Well, it didn't give me that confidence, actually. It gave me the passion, and it gave me the love, and it gave me uh, a life that was very fulfilled by theater. Because what gave you the confidence? I think the confidence came for me after working in the business for quite some time. I started out feeling desperately uh, anxious to do this. I, in my own little mind, in my own little world, I knew that I wanted to be a producer, but I didn't have great confidence. I had to do it. 
time after time after time and see that I would be respected and I would be able to do the job and you know I could work with talented people both on stage and off and that they would in turn respect my judgment and my care and, and my respect for them. It took me some time to really feel myself and I started later in my life. This was a career that I started in my 40s. Mm. I speak to a lot of women about that you know and I say it's never too late to be the person you want to be and that's really true. So I had confidence in my life. I mm. raised a beautiful family. I have a wonderful husband. Um, but the confidence in, in producing came slowly for me. And, and your first play was? My first play was a small musical review called Closer Than Ever, right. written by the great Richard Malpe and David Shire. I'm happy to say it celebrated its 25th anniversary, which made me feel old but proud. And, Mostly um, proud. Mostly proud. But the other play um, that you did very much connected to the AIDS Yes, epidemic. The Normal Heart. The Normal yeah. Heart. That was a labor of love for me. Yes. And something I'm extremely proud of, I would say. Social, a career highlight. I'm sorry for interrupting. Social issues, yeah. social messages connected to your art, extremely mm -hmm. important to you, obviously. Yes, I think that's been my particular niche market. You know, my mission is to be able to partner good theater with messages that audiences will, will take to heart, not in a spinachy way, but just really understand that we can make a difference. We can see something on stage that can definitely inform us, definitely move us emotionally, intellectually, but can also possibly empower us to do something as we leave the theater in the world. The Normal Heart was a great example of that. Mm -hmm. I did that play for many reasons. It was a revival. It was his, seconds left, ahead. It was his anniversary. Larry Kramer is oh, one of our greatest writers. A great activist, AIDS activist. Activist. And this was a message that people needed to hear. Kinky Boots, real quick. People can see it. People can see it now. It's in previews. It opens April 4th at the Al Hirschfeld Theater. It will be thrilling. You'll have the best time. I'm going to say goodbye there, but goodbye here. Thank Thanks. you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, Sun National Bank, New Jersey Natural Gas, United Water, County College of Morris, the Merck Company Foundation, and by Fedway Associates, Inc. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.